Texans Vikings because this one I don't know if it's so sneaky anymore. I was going to say sneaky, interesting game, but I don't know if it's sneaky anymore. Because I don't think it is. I think everybody know, knows it's going to be a fun one. <laughs> people know that the Vikings are for real now, right? J.J. McCarthy goes down in the preseason. People are just like, oh, no, there it went for the Vikings. And Sam Darnold's like, oh, I got you. Y'all forgot. Uh, and he just turned back into USC version of Sam Darnold. So what's the matchup that matters here for you in uh, this one that is no longer sneaky fun? Just plain old fun. <laughs> it's, just, it's just plain old fun. Um, and what is plain old fun is Brian Flores' defense and, and just the variety that exists there. So my matchup that matters is literally everybody on the Vikings defense that is involved in the pass rush versus the Houston O-line. And sure. that is that that varies the simulated pressures. I mean, Brian Flores, I think, is one of the best at presenting something pre-snap and then changing to something completely different, something that seems even in, unfathomable. And that's not just with the front. That's also with the back level with what he's doing with safeties. I think I saw some two corners go back and, and take the deep halves rather than safeties, which you're used to seeing. I mean, these guys are starting up on the line and, and go like it's absolutely impossible for a young quarterback to decipher exactly what Brian Flores' defenses are trying to do. And that is going to be no more apparent than with the pass rush in general. Brian Flores is actually blitzing a lot less than he was last year. He led the league in blitzes. I think he blitzed over half the time. Now it's Are more in that 30 stripes? Is What that allowed? Tiger changing his stripes? Is Ta- that yes. I thought that wasn't a thing. It's so interesting to me, too, because the the blitzes weren't exactly manifesting into pressures or sacks. Like, you weren't getting the actual production out of the blitzes last year. Now he's blitzing less, but they're getting more sacks. The Vikings lead the league in sacks right now. They're right up there with pressures, too. And they're leaders in pressures. And I think that everybody thought, you know, Daniil Hunter was leaving. This was going to be, a ma- like, a massive hole. But what you forget is that Brian Flores, his entire time in Miami, never had a double-digit sack guy. Daniel Hunter in Minnesota really was the point. first time he had that dude. And now he has two dudes on either side of this defensive line and Jonathan Grenard and now the first round pick Dallas Turner that could turn into yeah. double digit sack guys. Jonathan Grenard was a double digit sack guy in 2023 for Houston. So mm-hmm. he it is allowing him to do so many different things up at the line itself where he is only bringing four, but he's showing cover zero because he's got all the guys up on the line and he's dropping a ton of them back. It's, so much fun to watch. I would not want to go up against them if I were a quarterback. And that is what CJ Stroud is going to have to deal with. So this O-line is going to have to also figure out where they need to set their protections when they see all of these exotic looks from Brian Flores' defensive front. Did you see uh, Brock Purdy after the game last week? Go yes. Brian Flores. Did you see this clip? Like your scheme. He just just puts his hand on his shoulder and he's like, that scheme's crazy, man. And then he just keeps walking like that was it. He just like, he didn't really want to have a conversation with Flores. He just wanted (laughs) Flores to know that uh, he put him in hell mentally all all game. And so I think it's a really great shout out. Obviously, um, what you mentioned about Daniil Hunter and sort of that sub in with Jonathan Grenard coming over. I talked about this with Dalton Wasserman on the review show that we did on Monday. and. I think people, myself included, looked at this Daniil Hunter, Jonathan Grenard swap for the Texans and the Vikings. And we were just like, oh, okay. Like, I I like Hunter more. So I still think that the Texans got the better player, but it's kind of just like a one in, one out. That's not really what happened. Actually, they traded and both sides got better. Both sides got what they wanted. The Texans wanted more of a pass rushing defensive end in Hunter and (laughs) the Vikings because of Flores, wanted an edge rusher who is more of an outside linebacker type who would stand up for you, who could drop back. That's why mm-hmm. you're pairing it with Dallas Turner. And so that's why you're pairing and it Andrew with Andrew Van Ginkle. Van I didn't mention him. I 100%, need to mention him. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. And so I just think that it's, it's it, they've got, not that it's all stars at every position, but a really ideal setup with the type of defensive players they have to be able to run what Flores wants to run. So I think it's a really great call up by you. I definitely think that's a matchup that matters. I will once again, flip sides and say that I think the Texans edge rushers specifically versus Mm -hmm. the Vikings offensive tackles are going to be a big time matchup in this game. And I'm mainly talking about Daniel Hunter and Will Anderson going up against Christian Derrissaw and Brian O'Neill. I think that that's one of the best tackle duos that we have in the NFL. When you look at Derrissaw and O'Neill, 
that duo, if you're just looking at offensive tackles, 10th in the NFL in pass blocking grade at a 76.1. They're ninth in the NFL in sacks allowed with just one amongst the two of them. And then they're seventh in pressures allowed. Those two have only given up a combined six pressures all season. But if you flip sides and you go over to Hunter and Anderson, <laughs> seventh in the NFL in total pressures with 20, fourth in yeah. the NFL with four sacks between the two of them. So I just think that for as much as I think a lot of people are going to talk about Sam Donald, or, or there, a lot of people are going to talk about C.J. Stroud. They're going to talk about sort of the quarterbacks that are kind of going head-to-head here. And the two great head coaches and Kevin O'Connell as an offensive guy versus D'Amico Ryan's defensive guy. I think that that's all noteworthy and, and worth kind of bringing up. But it, it trenches. This this is yeah. where this game is going to be won and lost on both sides. So um, I, I think that that's a, that's a good theme that we both have here with our matchup that matters. But what's the plus mm-hmm. factor for you? Yeah, well, I went obvious on the plus factor here, and that was Sam Darnold. Uh, it's going to be very interesting because D'Amico Ryans is so familiar with the Shanahan McVay scheme that Kevin O'Connell runs. It's a reason that Sam Darnold has absolutely thrived under Kevin O'Connell because I think he is one of the, if not the most underrated coach in this league. What he was able to do last year after Kirk Cousins went down on top of now the resurgence of Sam Darnold. I want to make sure this is for real, but at the same time, Tamiko Ryans is going to know exactly what to expect out of this offense. So how can Sam Darnold combat that? Can he continue the tear that he's been on? I mean, he's top three in passing grade, second in passing yards per attempt. He's absolutely slinging it, 9.2 yards per attempt. Attempt. Um, he's ninth in average depth of target too. So he's pushing it down the field. Receivers are doing really, some really good things for him. Justin Jefferson is now battling that ankle injury. Jordan, Jordan Addison is battling an ankle. Uh, his receivers right. are, you know, they're, they're beat up a little bit, but can they still, can they scheme up something that is going to beat this D'Amico Ryan's defense? I, the, the chess match between them is going to be incredible. I know they're going to have a really good plan. It's just a matter of how much Sam Darnold can execute it. Yeah, the chat's doing a good job also saying, hey, shout out Patrick Jones the second, the edge rusher for the Vikings. Already got three sacks yes. on the season. I will I will gladly note that because <laughs> I was a Patrick Jones defender in the draft ah. class when he was coming out. And I was like, this dude's got juice. He does. I'm telling you. And Five he pressures, really has not, three, yeah. Yeah. He really has not kind of come into his own until this season, but um Never wrong. Just early. Just early. That's what they said. <laughs> um, my plus factor in this one is Tank Dell. I'm looking for Tank Dell and CJ Stroud to get that connection going a little bit better. He's targeted Dell 11 times this season, but only four catches. Dell has a drop, only 37 yards, two catches gaining a first down. I think we're going to start to see more of Tank Dell as the season goes on and they continue to get more comfortable with one another. But that was a really good connection last year before Dell got hurt. So I, I'm sort of surprised that it's off to a little bit of a slow start now. You add Stefan Diggs to the mix, and he's got to get his targets, and Nico Collins is always going to get his as well. So it's just a maybe a timing type of a thing of when I'm going to him. But I even would have felt like, hey, 11 targets for Dell would have thought the catch rate would be higher yeah. than just bringing in four of those catches. So I'm looking for that chemistry to be a little bit better. If they continue to catch – or if they start to catch fire this upcoming weekend, then we could really see some fireworks here. Um, I think it was Brandon in the chat. Yeah, Brandon said Texans will win – 27 to 13 so brandon mm-hmm. if you hit it on the nose you have to come <laughs> back into the chat next week for the show Tell and us. make sure that you do your victory lap here so 